Toi. Ok. Honorable Netumbo Nandin Taitua, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Honorable Ministers, Your Excellency Ambassador Z. Gavirwe, Special Envoy, Members of the Technical Committee, Members of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. I am here this morning, delegated by His Excellency President Hage G. Gaingob, to provide an update to affected communities and Namibians at large about the genocide talks led by the Namibian government on behalf of the affected communities and on behalf of all Namibians. I fully appreciate the difficulties, the journeys, the journey we have traveled, the challenges we have encountered, and the opportunities that lie ahead in order to heal the wounds of the past and move towards a path of reconciliation and reconstruction. Ladies and gentlemen, since our independence in 1990, various attempts have been made by individuals and especially individual traditional leaders of the affected communities to engage the government of the Federal Republic of Germany to account for the 1904-1908 genocide committed by the German colonial troops in Namibia against the Ovaherero and Nama communities. These attempts, as laudable as they have been, did not yield the result we had expected in order to open a new chapter between Namibia the affected communities, and the Federal Republic of Germany. In 2006, the National Assembly of the Republic of Namibia unanimously passed a motion on the 1904-1908 genocide. That motion, everybody knows, was presented, was peer-headed and presented by our late Chief Riwako. May his soul rest in peace. However, the motion now become the property of the National Assembly. It became a national motion accepted. And the motion equivocally stated that German should a, acknowledge that the German state committed genocide in Namibia during the period of 1904-1908. B, render an unconditional apology to Namibia for the genocide. To Namibia, to the Namibians, to the com affected community is the same thing, unconditional apology to the people of Namibia. C, pay reparations. That is the text of the, the resolution of the National Assembly. The National Assembly further directed the Namibian government to negotiate with the government of the Federal Republic of Germany to bring the genocide matter 
to its logical conclusion. Based on this motion, the National Assembly directed the government to negotiate and find an acceptable solution. It should be emphasized that the motion provided the modus operandi of in, and the modus of engagement, namely, the negotiated, namely to negotiate with Germany and not to use any other means such as litigation. Basically, there was no other viable route to follow than this one. Since 2006, the Namibian government, through the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation, has been engaging the German government on this matter, but without success. It was only in 2015 when the government of the Federal Republic of Germany informed the government of the Republic of Namibia about its intention to negotiate on the genocide committed by the German authorities during the period of German colonialism in Namibia. The Minister for International Relations knows the longer history of the up and down between Namibia and Germany on this matter. As a result, the two governments agreed to appoint special envoys. If there is somebody you, you know already who the special envoy is, is my senior brother to my left, Ambassador Professor Dr. Zedekia Gavirwe. Specially selected for his experience in terms of history and in terms of diplomacy and other things, I don't need to motivate that. The duties of the special envoys were in the area to negotiate on behalf of the two governments or the two respective governments, ours represented by Dr. Ngavirwe and others by Dr. Uh, Ambassador Pauls, and also to serve as a liaison and focal person during the negotiations. The whole government cannot negotiate, the whole country cannot negotiate. You have to have people who are spending their time thinking and planning how to negotiate. Let me talk now about Namibia's negotiation strategy. With a clear purpose to succeed in the negotiations, the Namibia government adopted a three-pronged strategy, which are as follows. A, cabinet in November 2015 appointed a special political cabinet committee chaired by the vice president, then late Dr. Nikki Yambo, may his soul rest in peace, to guide the negotiations between the two governments and map out a clear negotiation position for Namibia. In view of this, the government appointed a technical committee chaired by Ambassador Tonata Itenge Mvula and composed of Namibian experts on economics, on history, and research, and respective and representatives of affected communities to conduct research and produce Namibia's negotiation proposal. B, in ensuring that the process of negotiation was transparent and above board, the Special Political Cabinet Committee constituted a chief's forum composed of the traditional leaders of the affected communities in order to provide them with the feedback on the negotiations and to allow them to make input and advise cabinet 
on the negotiation strategy. Between 2016 and 2021, the Chiefs Forum held more than eight sessions. During these sessions, traditional leaders and their advisors made meaningful inputs in the negotiation strategy and provided wisdom to the special envoy and his negotiation team. And C, the special envoy and the technical committee conducted outreach programs in the seven regions, namely Erongo, Hardap, Karas, Kunene, Komas, Omaheke, and Ochodonjupa, to consult traditional leaders, community, and civil society organizations on their needs, which were fully incorporated in the negotiation strategy. The affected community predominantly are domiciled in these seven regions. Challenges encountered during the negotiations. Negotiations by nature are never easy and are complex undertakings that require, that require good faith and most importantly, a process of honest give and take. Over a period of five years, between 2015 and 2021, nine rounds of negotiations were held, alternatively alternating between, sometimes they take place here in Namibia, and on the other time they take place in Germany. The following main challenges were encountered. The Namibian negotiating team faced heavy resistance from Germany to accept our non-negotiable position and narrative that the, that the mass killings of the Ovaherero and Nama communities, including forceful seizure of their land, property, and cultural artifacts were genocide. In terms of the 1948 UN Convention, in light of our position, without acceptance that Germany committed genocide against the Ovaherero and Nama communities, there would be no basis for an apology. Germany refused to pay reparation. Instead, the German government offered financial contribution of what is called, in their own language, the, mean, the meaning healing of wounds. Based on the above, negotiation took a longer period than expected. Initially, it was expected that they would be finalized within one year, from one here we are in the fifth year. Outcome of the negotiations. Namibia and Germany agreed on the joint declaration. The joint declaration as a common narrative, which is the framework to guide the process of acknowledgement of genocide, rendering of an apology, and the payments or reparation by the Federal Republic of Germany. The declaration will also serve as the foundation document to guide the future relationship between the two countries. The declaration constitutes the following. A, acknowledgement of genocide. The German government has finally agreed that the mass killings of the Ovaherero and Nama communities, the seizure of their land, livestock, and cultural artifacts by German imperial troops in Namibia between 1904-1908 constitute and fit the definition 
of genocide as prescribed in the UN Convention on Punishment of Crime of Genocide of 1948. Apology. The German government has agreed to render an unconditional apology to the affected communities and the government of the Republic of Namibia for the genocide. The apology will be delivered by the German president, by the president of the Federal Republic of Germany in the National Assembly of Namibia on a date to be agreed upon between the two governments. Then we come to payment or reparation. And this one was the most difficult and longest discussed item. As a consequence of the genocide committed between 1904-1908, Germany has accepted a moral, historical, and political obligation to pay monetary compensation, which means reparations, for reconciliation and reconstruction programs for the particularly affected communities to improve their livelihoods. Then we talk about, as I said, the most difficult thing, we used to refer to it as the elephant in the room. Very difficult to move, very difficult to turn. Reparation package. The reparation package will be comprised of two components. Component number one is reconciliation. Component number two is reconstruction and reconstruction programs. With regard to the reconstruction program, a program will be set up to assist the development of the descendants of the particularly affected communities in line with their identified needs. Representatives of these communities will participate in this process in a decisive capacity. Under the said programs, project will be implemented in the following regions, which I have already mentioned, but let me once again mention them. Erongo, Hardap, Karas, Kunene, Komas, Maheke, and Ochodonjupa. In the following sectors, sector one, land reform, in particular, land acquisition within the framework of the Namibian constitution and land development. You buy, you develop, and you assign. Then, in the field of agriculture, rural livelihoods and natural resources, rural infrastructure, energy and water supply, technical, vocational, education and training. Those are the broader areas, not the final areas. A reconciliation program will be established in which Germany commits to promote and support reconciliation between the affected communities, the people of Namibia and Germany through preserving the records of the colonial era. The German like the word memory, I think is a poor translation. It's basically to mention that what was done, what was recorded, was what photographed, was what taken, everything must be recorded and be there for everybody to see and never to be denied by anybody else. In particular, those are the records, the memoria, the memoria, the memoria now I'm creating my own words, the items that ident are identified as emanating from that period 
We should not erase them, we should not destroy them, we should keep them so that everybody recognize what happened was truly horrendous. Inter, uh, inter alia mem memory and re re remembrance, supporting research and education, cultural and linguistic issues, as well as encouraging meetings of and exchange between all generations, in particular the youth, the youth of Namibia and the youth of Germany. The government of the Federal Republic of Germany will make available an amount of 1.1 billion euros. The German commits herself to allocate this amount over a period of 30 years. Of this, the amount of 1 billion and 50 million euros will be dedicated to the construction or programs befitting the descendants of the particularly affected communities. 50, mil, 50 million euros will be dedicated to the project of reconciliation, remembrance, research, and education. The allocation of funds will be as follows. I think these figures are no longer new. They are known to you. 50 million euros for reconciliation, 130 million euro for renewable energy or for energy, 150 million euro for vocational training and vocational education, 100 million euro for rural roads, 130 million euro for rural water supply and sanitation. 540 million euro for land acquisition and training, thus making the total of 1.1 billion euro for a period of 30 years. As I've been agreed that during the implementation of these programs, technical assistance should not be more than 50% of the total amount so so that funds could be spent on the real issue of reparation, or the real programs, not on people. Within the indicated budgetary allocation, flexibility exists for the sectors to be exchanged depending on the expressed needs of the affected communities. Then we went to some other issue, whether the reparation amount is adequate and satisfactory. That's a national question to all of us. I am fully aware that the reparation amount was always going to be a highly contested, contentious issue. In 2016, the Namibian government submitted a quantum for reparation to the government of the Federal Republic of Germany. This quantum was the total calculation of the loss of life, ancestral land, livestock and cultural properties, and heritage of the over Herero and Nama communities between 1904-1908. The German government gave a counter offer of a lesser, much lesser amount it was for these reasons that negotiations took more than five years due to the numerous counter offers from Germany, which were totally unacceptable to Namibia because of the low amount. This situation almost led to a deadlock and to the inconclusive talks. Then we need we need it, but we need now to recognize that the amount of 1.1 billion euro agreed upon between the two governments is not enough and does not adequately address the initial quantum of reparation initially submitted to the German government. However, 
in any negotiations and based on the principle of give and take. The government of Namibia believes that the amount, even if not enough, we have made Germany to agree to commit itself to revisit and renegotiate this amount as the implementation of the reparation ensues. The implementation will also be subjected to periodic impact assessment and evaluation at agreed intervals. This assessment will be done with an objective to ascertain on whether the primary objective of this reconciliation and reconstruction programs of improving the livelihoods of the affected community has been achieved. In addition, I am glad to note that the bilateral relations between the two countries will no longer be at the same level, but would be elevated to the highest level through a binational commission. This new enhanced relationship between the two countries will enable Namibia to address any remaining issues pertaining to the reconciliation and reconstruction program, while also continuing to tapping from the opportunities that will benefit future generations of Namibians. Then we come to if accepted and agreed implementation vehicle. Namibia and Germany agreed to set up a body implementation vehicle, which will be responsible for the implementation of their reparation programs. Please note that as from once these negotiations are concluded, fully concluded, certain people are going to be out of jobs and they have already accepted so. I don't have to tell you who they are. The money will be deposited in a fund that it separate and outside the government of the Republic of Namibia's national budget. To those who are alleging that the amounts will be used for other government programs and activities, we wish to reassure you, reassure them, that this will not happen. Our government processes are transparent and the amounts allocated to the affected communities will be solely dedicated to the implementation of the agreement. The governance of the fund will be tri trilateral, composed of representatives from both governments and the affected communities. The legal framework of the implementation vehicle will be developed in a transparent manner where the affected communities will fully participate. Appeal for calm and for us to show that we have moved a step ahead. The government appeal to all Namibians, especially the affected communities, to remain calm and to think deeply on this most sensitive matter. The doors of the Namibian government remains open, as it has always been, for meaningful advice, discussions, and suggestions. The process of consultation is still ongoing. The matter will still go to Parliament, where it originated, for ratification, while the Office of the Attorney General is advising on legal matters between the agreements, before the agreement is finally signed between the two countries. We will proceed together in the best interest of the affected communities and the Namibian nation at large. The special envoy, my good friend, Ambassador Zed Gavirwe, 
his technical team, and our traditional authorities carried out a difficult mission with the necessary will, patience, and skills for which we shall be eternally grateful. Germany has made important concession by agreeing to the fact that it, commit, that it committed, that it is committed, that it committed a genocide on our soil, and that it will render an apology to be followed by reparations against the untold loss of life, suffering, and humiliation of the Ovaherero and Nama communities and Namibians at large. In closing, let me thank President Hage Gottfried Geingob for his consummate leadership and guidance during the negocide, genocide talks with the Federal Republic of Germany. A lot of works lie ahead. However, we have to proceed with the knowledge that we have made remarkable progress over the past five years of negotiations. And that is an opportunity that we should not waste. I thank you for your attention. Something to add before the questions? No, thank you. The microphone went 50% further than 5%. Let, let us then make the Minister of Information to be the, to help us in terms of coordinating with the, with the media. Uh, thank you very much, Comrade Vice President. Any questions from the media? Good morning. My name is Shaligan Peterson. I'm a journalist uh, with the Namibian. VP, uh, you keep calling it reparations. According to Germany, it is not reparations. It is reconciliation and reconstruction. Could you just provide clarity there? Because you keep saying reparations, and that is not what we got from Germany. Um, is it true, and is it true that the government um, essentially rushed this agreement or this declaration, or it was rushed by both of the governments as a result of Germans, uh, Germany's elections in September? Um, DPM, how come uh, your counterparts from Germany was ready to give out information in the last few weeks, yet? Um, Namibia was not doing the same. Why did Namibia chose to be so quiet when Germany was so vocal about the declaration? Uh, yesterday at the press of the Overherero and Nama Council uh, press conference, um, uh, said that the agreement was essentially already initialed by the two envoys. Um, can you just uh, give us clarity there? And also, um, Yes, according to one of the negotiators, um, Germany said that they will give more money after the elections, um, despite the declaration of the draft declaration stating that both governments understand that um, this, uh, the amount mentioned in the declaration is the final amount and settles all financial obligation from Germany's side. I just want you to give clarity there. Is this true? Will there be more money given after the elections? Um, four years ago, government uh, got lawyers and paid them close to 36 million to advise government through this process. How have their advice helped during this process? Um, please just give us that information. 
Um, and also, how did the two governments arrive at 1.1 billion euros? Uh, perhaps they were... Um, specific things that led up to, or calculation that led up to one, the 1.1 billion euros. And um, according once again to the statement made by the council yesterday, they said that government assessed the damage to be 1.26 trillion Namibian dollars. Can you confirm that amount? And also, can you confirm the amount that the offer that was put on the table at first by Germany uh, amounted to 300 million euros? And then can you please give us, during the nine rounds, please give us key events just to take us through the journey. Perhaps um, Dr. Z can, can do that for us. Key events that took place during the nine rounds just to ensure that Namibians are also part of the process. And um, this amount uh, is perceived to be a development aid uh, amount from Germany's side. Um, how will government ensure that the affected communities, I know you said that uh, implementation body will be set up. Can we just have more information on this implementation body? Um, and then the, yes, the joint draft uh, declaration speaks of the fact that the Overherero and the Nama people were shot, hung, burned, starved, uh, experimented on, enslaved, worked to death abused, raped, and uh, among others. And that's just a few things that they did mention. Do you, in your good conscience, VP, think that the 18.4 billion suffices to what I just mentioned, to the, to the community being slave, enslaved, raped, and what I mentioned before? Uh, and uh, lastly, VP, um, so just to get clarity from what you said. Namibia is accepting this offer and this will be the last offer that there is. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. I think that was quite a handful already. We perhaps need to attend to that before we ask for further. Okay, we are many here. Uh, the, the envoy is here. The international relations minister is here. The technical committee is here. We should help one another to see. First, the German did not want us even to refer to reparation. Later on, in our documents, we have insisted, and they are no longer objecting to that, and even in their own document, reparation is mentioned, not just the, the original doing good and whatever. That, that we, we feel, okay? Um, the issue of the foreign ministers not announcing that will be done. The, there is a difference between the document which you have initialed and the one that is finally signed and you exchange documents officially and formally in public. The issue as I said already in the statement, the issue of the amount will be difficult. And one of your last question was, how do I feel? Deep down in my heart and soul and head, there is no way you truly, even if we, <clears throat> we were to come up to the figure we have mentioned, the trillion, no amount of money, no amount of money in any currency can truly compensate the life of a human being. And therefore, how I feel, <coughs> how I feel, it's not that we said already that I don't think any Namibian will think that this is enough or that there will be enough amount that compensate all that what happened. To be killed, to be rooted, to be chased out of your country, to be sent into exile, no amount of money can, can do that. But we are saying this was not a court case, if it was a court case and we have 
other bigger countries that were on our side, maybe ganging up against Germany, we could have gotten more. But that was not the process we had followed. It was us pushing to get as much as we can, and the German stalling. That's why I said it took five years. And how we feel, nobody will feel good about what happened. Nobody will feel good about this amount. But the issue is, do we move ahead? Do we remain where we stand? Or do we move backwards? <clears throat> I like to quote the story which we, the Mozambicans used to tell when they were fighting for their independence, that the Portuguese Jews gave them three options. If you move ahead, all your fathers will die. Then they said, oh, then we stay where we are. Then your mothers will die. Then you said, then we move backwards, then all of you will die. <clears throat> These are historic choices we have to make, very difficult as they are. There is no way that was, if there were other opportunities to squeeze money out of the Germans, we could have done it. It is us who have pushed from 300, later on moving up to 600 million euros to 700, and we were stuck for a long time at 700. And through the skills of those who were negotiating and bringing up especially the issue of land, that's why you find that the money for the land is the bigger chunk, is when we end up getting to the, the billion level and above. We are not proud of the amount, but we can, be, we can say that our negotiators did the very best they could do under the process given to them to negotiate and to come and report. And we said we will proceed as we have started. Parliament take a resolution. Cabinet was given the responsibility. The president of all the three presidents, it was President Geingob who was left with this issue to resolve, and it came at this time when the German decided to negotiate appointed an envoy, the envoy has negotiated, the foreign minister will, will sign the document and parliament will take the final decision. This is also an issue which is for all, we are basically, the whole country is negotiating. All our traditional leaders, especially in this region, seven region, they are involved. And therefore it is very, very difficult. And that's why I appeal for calm so that we can take a right decision on this matter. So, so the other question can be answered by other people. Yes, TPM. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vice President. And thank you for the one who has put the questions, I believe, on behalf of the nation. Uh, the specific question which is addressed to me is that uh, the German government or the German Minister of Foreign Affairs has been giving information, but uh, on the Namibian side, we have not been giving information. Yes, uh, as much as uh, we have been two governments, that have been engaging one another. Uh, we have a different setup altogether. But uh, I have to mention that uh, during the negotiations, the government of Namibia has been giving updates to the Namibian people uh, through the National Assembly. Uh, however, when we came now to this uh, last or the stage where we are, 
after the ninth round of negotiation, uh, which we felt is bringing us closer to concluding the process. Uh, that is where the cabinet deliberated on the matter and then a decision taken that uh, the prime minister has now to officially inform the nation through the National Assembly. And uh, that is on that basis that uh, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the minister in particular, in responding to all your queries, has been making it very clear that, uh, yes, some progress has been made, and uh, it will be communicated to the Namibian people. So that is just to say that uh, the Germans have decided their own route, but that does not mean that uh, we have to get out of our route at that point in time. So that is really uh, what, is, uh, the, the, what had happened, and that is uh, the reason why. Uh, you have also talked about the implementation, which uh, I believe the Vice President has really elaborated on that that uh, there's going to be specific mechanism uh, which is going to be set up. And um, uh, the, 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 the terms of reference and the guidelines how that's going to be done is something that's going to be elaborated on. And it was made very clear that the affected communities will play a role in that uh, implementation uh, uh, mechanism. Um, as on the, one of the people you say is saying the Germans are telling them uh, they are ready to make money available after elections. Uh, of course, uh, as uh, the Vice President mentioned, that uh, what the Germans have done cannot be equalized to any monetary value. However, if uh, that is going to happen, Namibia will be happy. But uh, what I can tell you at this stage, we are not aware. Uh, nevertheless, we are also aware that uh, the German parliament has taken a resolution to always have Namibia as uh, a special, or to have a special relationship between Namibia and Germany because our history. And uh, through that, uh, different programs have to be developed that will really show that there is such a special relationship. So therefore, should there be money after elections, uh, we will appreciate it. And uh, it will be accordingly welcome in Namibia and uh, be used in the best interest of the Namibian people. Um, basically, that is what uh, I can add um, in addition to what um, the Vice President have said. Thank you, Comrade Vice President. Thank you. Is there anything that the Special Envoy want to add? Somebody else? Or if not, we go back to the media. Any other questions? Yes, over there. Oh, good morning. Thank you very much for the opportunity. My name is Ogito Greg. I write for Republican newspaper. Basically, I've only got one question. And uh, it emanates from what the uh, Vice President was saying about how this is a national question and uh, all of Namibians must decide. I wanted to know what provision will be made for hearing the decision of all Namibians? Will there be some kind of a referendum or a poll? Or will you rely on the National Assembly, which even right now is excluding some elected members from participating? And I wanted to know uh, what thought has been given to the possibility that some sectors of Namibian society adamantly don't accept this uh, 
offer and would want to express that, will there be steps taken against them? Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other question? Help me to translate what, what the, the, the key question. So the question was, the first question was uh, that uh, whether this issue, now that it has generated debate, whether it will be referred to a referendum or whether it will just be decided by the National Assembly, which according to the uh, person who asked the question, does not constitute of all members because there are two members that are suspended. That was what was your answer. Yeah, as we are trying to follow the procedures we have established already, at no time in the process was there a reference to referendum. What we are going to do is to return all these matters where the motions started. What the parliament will do, what the parliament will decide, that's not for us to, to decide. But as far as we are concerned, parliament is the representative of all Namibians, elected by the majority of Namibians, and is the government that is the body that makes laws for all of us, irrespective whether we supported this party or the other party. And the executive is there to manage the administration of the country, whether we uh, align ourselves to the policy of that party in government that time or not, they must do what constitutionally is required of them. So we will definitely take all this proposal to parliament, parliament will debate them, and I want to clarify, the Prime Minister tomorrow, hopefully, is only to inform and to explain the process what happened. The documents once signed, when the German Foreign Minister comes here, will then, all the documents, all the agreements will now be submitted to Parliament, and Parliament will debate them, approve them, or reject them. And from there, then they have to decide, we have to decide. That is, that this process did not start with a referendum. It did not start for asking every citizen. It's always the leadership, the leadership of the community, the leadership of the parties, the leadership of parliament, the national leadership that decided on these things. And we should follow the same procedures we have started with to the end. And if there is some additional thing, it should come again from Parliament. Thank you very much. <clears throat> yes, next. Um, good morning, my name is Jemima Bakers from Namibian Sun newspaper. Um, the VP, um, my colleague asked a question on whether the uh, a few years ago, under the guidance of the former um, uh, Justice Minister Saki Shangala government, enlisted a number of lawyers for which they paid in the area of 36 million. Um, she asked whether uh, can you explain to us how the advice of these lawyers helped government to get to this um, ag agreement? And then the um, co uh, pe uh, people that are sitting there, the representatives, they said yesterday that Germany will add more money as time goes. Yet Germany is saying once the dotted line is signed, then 1.1 billion is making up for everything. And um, can you also please explain the land reform? How will the land reform process work? How will people benefit? Who will benefit? What criteria is there for people to benefit? And um, you just said the German foreign minister will come here, but earlier you said the German president. Can we just have clarity on that? Thank you very much. I have some problem with the acoustics, uh, so we have to help me. But let me answer first the one I understand. The issue of land reform 
and land acquisition. We have already indicated that a new mechanism has to be put in place to work on those issues. That will be a legal document scrutinized by the Office of the Attorney General, which usually advise whether this legally possible, legally not possible. So we have not yet reached there, because first we have to conclude these negotiations. We have to adopt that what has been negotiated is acceptable. With all the reservations we have, we should proceed, or we throw the paper, the, the document away. The issue of more money. <clears throat> I think we should understand what the Germans are trying also to accomplish on their side, to say that, yes, once this, we have passed through this phase, we have agreed to all the crimes committed, we have ad ad apologized, we have accepted to that what, what happened is genocide. Let us move into a new direction. Let's push up, put up this by national commission, which will be chaired, my understanding is not yet finalized, but will be chaired at the level of head of state, or head of, head of governments. So once that is, then we can now talk about other issues in terms of our needs for our development in terms of the needs of our community, in terms of our need of our, of our people, especially those from the community that were almost wiped out, if I may use that word. Uh, the other items, ICT, or... Another question, I think, or, yeah, uh, is directed perhaps to the DPM, the one of the payments, I think. Okay, good. Yeah, uh, thanks, thank you very much. Uh, just to add that uh, we have to understand that um, when it comes to our cooperation with German and uh, in addressing this dark chapter of our history, there are two things. Uh, what we are talking here, which was uh, negotiated through our invoice and our technical committee members, is uh, to address how we are going to reconcile on what had happened in our history. At the same time, that does not take away the development cooperation that Germany continue to commit to Namibia. And uh, that is the one which is now going to be treated within the framework of our special relationship between the two countries. And uh, now and then, there will be additional funding to be made available for that specific program. Uh, at the same time, this one is a different program, which is for the reconciliation, reconstruction, based on what the Germans have agreed, that what they have committed in Namibia in today's world, it is genocide. And for that, they are apologizing. And while we ourselves, what we see it is reparation, they are doing good in order to address that dark history. Uh, you ask the question uh, that uh, the vice president talked about the president and then talked about the minister. Yes, there are two different things here. Uh, the declaration we are talking about 
which is going to be the basis for the implementation of the whole process. Uh, it was agreed that it should be signed by the ministers responsible for foreign affairs or international relations and cooperation, depends the title you are using in your respective country. So the foreign minister of Germany will be coming to Namibia in order for the two ministers to sign that declaration. Now, once everything is done, then at an appropriate time to be agreed between the two governments or countries, then the president of Germany will come to Namibia and apologize to the Namibian people through the parliament because that is the sender of the Namibian people where you have their representative. And once you are doing that, you know that you are talking to the whole Namibian nation. And that's why the German president is the one who is going to come and do that. So that is how the mention of a foreign minister and the president comes in. Perhaps uh, the question has not been answered. I'm going to ask it for the third time. But perhaps it is only fair that I uh, uh, pose the question to Honorable Netumbo because it was, in fact, under your budget that the funds for the lawyers were administrated. So can you please tell us, how did the uh, lawyers that were paid the 30 million, 36 million under uh, the former minister, Saki Shangala, how did that help us to get to this declaration? And then I'm going to read what Germany's special envoy, Rubrik um, Pollen, said. He says, the government negotiations are concluded with the, yeah, with the signing of the joint declaration. You've just said that more money will come. So it is either the Namibian government is lying to save face, or we, you don't know what, what Germany is really telling us. So can you please clarify? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, with the permission of the Vice President. On your question, which is uh, being posted for the third time, uh, yes, we are all aware that uh, at the initial stage of our engagement with the Germans, uh, there were a lot of work that needs to be done, uh, particularly we were to decide whether we are taking a legal route or we are taking a political route. But uh, it has come after all the analysis has been made that uh, we should take the political route. Uh, the officer of the Attorney General had the responsibility to look into all these issues. And um, of course, the, 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 the Attorney General Office then decided to contract the lawyers, uh, which was done uh, not to assist in the administration of the funding of the program, which is under the Ministry of International Relations and Cooperation, but to assist the Attorney General, whom we all know that whenever the Attorney General is having responsibility, they can contract any person who they feel has the capacity to help. And I believe it was on that base that the Attorney General Office did that. Uh, of course, we have now reached where we are. And uh, at this stage, I have not made an analysis to identify each specific action as to what extent it has contributed. However, I want to take it that it's a concerted effort of everything that has been done in the process 
that brought us where we are. So we have legal advices, economic advices, political advices, social advices that has brought us here. So therefore, it's very difficult to pinpoint any of the activities and then to say this is the one has made this particular impact. It is a combined efforts of all the activities. Uh, on the issue of the document, you know, there is no confusion here. The, you are talking about initialing. When you are initialing a document, this is a process to say where you have reached those who are given that responsibility, you have done your work. So the initial document you are talking about is initialed by the invoice. But for it now to be taken to our parliaments, it has to be signed. And that is the stage that remains to be done. So the ministers have then to satisfy themselves with the document initialed by the invoice and then sign the document. So there's no confusion at all. I, I, I understand exactly what the German minister talked about, an initial document, but now I'm saying that initial documents needs to be signed, and it will be signed by the two ministers from Germany and Namibia. Okay, the next one, please. Uh, before the next one, the deputy governor wanted to add up to clarify something, him being a member of the team. Uh, th thank you very much. Um, I'm not really going to bring any new dimension, uh, but just to add on what uh, the VP and the DPM has already explained, especially on two key questions. Th the first question maybe that I will touch on is where it was asked on the chronology of the offers and the counter offers. I just want to touch on that briefly. And then the second one, that I'm hearing, it also came back for the second time on whether we have spoken about more money. I want to explain briefly on that. Just briefly getting on the chronology of offers and counter offers. As a team, before we started with a negotiation, we said we came up with a comprehensive narrative. And in that narrative, we also did a calculation of cost and losses that has been incurred by the affected communities during the 1904 up to 1908. And when we did that calculations, it looks at quite a number of things. We look at the loss of land, the loss of lives, the loss of livelihood, and also the loss of some other properties. When we did that cost, it brought us to an amount of 1.1 trillion. That is close to, is an equivalent of around 70 billion euro. That is what we have submitted as a negotiating team to the Germans. The Germans said with that possibly for six to nine months without hearing anything from them. I believe that they were analyzing. They came back to us they offered us an amount of 289 million euro. That's what they put on the table. Of course, it was rejected. The second one, they add a little bit, 300 million. Again, it was a drop in an ocean. It was rejected. They came back for the third time. They offer us an amount close to 700 million again. So that's why the negotiations were protracted because the elephant in the room was the amount, was the quantum. 
And then later on, they came back again to say that, look, uh, based on this, we are going to add a, uh, what we call is a concession loan, an amount close to 700 and 780 million that will be used for water desalination and is going to be a concessional, say a 2%. Again, it was rejected because we are talking about an issue of genocide here and concession alone has got no room uh, in this. So that was rejected. And then initially, I think the issue of land, the Germans were not so much favorable to it and it was, it was pushed by our leaders and by the negotiating team. So the land was pushed and is the one that has really brought this amount close to 895 million, 895 million euro. Again, that was not yet enough. And then eventually it was pushed to 1.1 billion. So that is really to clarify that it was not just an overnight thing where we are hearing that maybe the negotiating team or the government did not have any position or there were no figures that were worked out. I don't think that there is any other authoritative document in terms of calculating cost except this one. That's what I know. Possibly there are others that we are not aware of. So that is really the position. Now, on the second question, whether there is more money that will come after the election. I don't think that there is any one of us, not even the negotiating team, not even anyone from government who have really spoken about more money. What we have spoken about is to say that with these negotiations, it has brought us into a new chapter, into a new relationship. First, if all these things go well and it's approved by parliament, the relationship between Germany is going to be elevated because you have got a component of binational commission. Now, the VP has stated it clearly because you have got a binational commission. Issues that are remaining that were possibly not fully addressed now or also that may emerge later on they will be addressed within that framework. That's one. The second issue also that is giving us a trust and hope of the new relationship is with this offer that we have got on the table now, programs regarding reconstruction will be implemented. And now when you implement a program, you always set objectives, and the objective clearly is to improve the livelihood of these people. That's why an assessment is going to be done periodically. And based on that assessment, you need to, because if you say that I'm going to build a road of 200 kilometers, that's what you have set for yourself. And you cannot just build a road of two meters now and then stop. You make an assessment, and then you make sure that the 200 meters that has been, 200 kilometers that has been set has really been achieved. So if it is not achieved, then that's where the negotiation will kick in to say that we have said that we will build so much, but we are not yet there. So that's where the hope of more money is kicking in. And it's not really the absolute money to say that there, there is, no, is money, no money, but it's but based, it's based on, those, on pillars. those pillars. I just, I just want to clarify on that. that. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. The next one, then time is going to one. Go ahead, please. Okay, my name is Martina Mutanga from Informante newspaper. I only have two questions. Does the amount account for inflation? And will the normal development assistance continue to parallel with the new initiative? Okay. Can you hear me clear now? My name is Martina Mutanga from Informante newspaper. Okay, I have two questions. The first one is, does the amount account for inflation? 
And the second one is, will the normal development assistance continue to parallel with the new initiative? Thank you very much. The other one from Confidente just to come also and ask the question before. Um, my name is Maria from Namibia Press Agency. Um, uh, one of the questions that I wanted to ask has just been answered by the governor, which was uh, how we arrived at 19 billion PEPs, what was taken into consideration, which was asked by my colleague. But um, now the question, the VP said uh, the doors are still open, those, and we know that there has been a lot of people who are... Uh, um, there has been opposition or people are not supporting or in agreement are not um, agreeing with the amounts. And you're saying your doors are still open, government doors are still open. And now the question is, how is this uh, people's, uh, um, um, uh, sorry, um, those that have more to say or uh, advices or who are opposing the new amounts, how is that going to be implemented if we are saying we already have documents that are drawn up that are going to parliament? And also, um, one of the, uh, the, the, uh, the Minister of International Relations said the president, the German president, would come and make an apology. Is that after parliament has discussed and agreed or rejected the paper, or is that before? Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, 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 I, I must thank uh, Deputy Governor of the Bank of Namibia, Epson Wanguta, for the clarification of the money issue. And the inflation issue is that we, we are still talking about how is this money going to come? Will it come in a lump sum? put it somewhere and then take money out of that for the programs, or that will be installment, all those things will be worked out. And it's only then that we will talk about inflation. Suppose the money come here and it's in our own accounts. So the money that is in terms of interest that is going to be accrue will be added to that one. The issue of new initiatives, if I understand it correctly, our aim right now is to conclude this negotiation on the government side. That is why we are appealing to all our communities and all our leaders at all levels, truly, to think twice. Let us uh, know that this is the most, most difficult negotiations and difficult issue to deal with. Maybe only Rwanda or other countries have dealt with it. So we, this is a, a unique period in our history that we confront the colonizer, we confront the op oppressor, we confront the person who has cause genocide on our people. And we are talking at the same table. The initiative will, will come once this period has, has passed. All the agreement has been done, and then, as other people have said, we have now in a new frame of cooperation. Uh, the issue of people advising we have representatives of the communities. We have advisors. How to channel those? We have the chiefs forum. And we will have another meeting this afternoon, again to engage our chiefs and traditional leaders of the communities, so that they can give us their advice, and we can give the explanations they need. So then the issue of the apology. The apology will come once all the processes had been achieved. Cabinet was briefed. Parliament 
will be briefed and Parliament will have to discuss the real document, have to agree on the document. And once that is done, because that is the gist on which you can say that they, we are apologizing on the basis of the agreement we have reached, and any other apo apology just in the air, with no basic documentary basis, will not help us in the future. That is what we intend to achieve with the goodwill of all citizens, and especially those who come from these communities, especially the traditional leaders who come from those communities. We must work together in order to succeed, moving united and in the same direction. I would like to conclude this meeting here because it's now one o'clock. With your permission, if there is no outstanding question that, yeah, the DPM come in. Then uh, we my sincere apology, VP. No, it's no, you just have not to. Mm -hmm. You have not concluded. I was <laughs> okay. to the press. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the issue of inflation has been explained, but I want also to add that uh, remember we are talking this money in terms of euro. And it uh, depends now, as it was mentioned, when it's coming. And uh, you might find that uh, if the euro appreciate and then we are turning it into Namibian dollar, you might find that we are gaining. Uh, I think those of the financial background uh, could explain it and understand it better. Uh, and then just to add that uh, this new initiative this new initiative is accompanying the issue of the Germany accepting that what they did in Namibia is tantamount to genocide and they are apologizing. The normal development cooperation support will continue and within the framework of the Binational Commission, guided by the decision of the German parliament, which is talking about our special relationship, we then have an opportunity to ask that this normal development cooperation should be handled in a different way, and even in terms of impact into Namibia has to show that really this is a special relationship. And this will not only be confined to the government, government cooperation. It has to be taken even at the level of corporates. It has to be taken at the level of people-to-people -people conduct. For example, if you have now the German companies in Namibia, and you have those companies having mother companies in Germany, and we know that Germany's technology is very high, why can't we arrange to make sure that we always have young Namibians who are going to benefit from that German technology and then bring that technology back? So that's just to underline that this new initiative, which is going to have a special vehicle does not affect the normal development cooperation, but because of the level where we are now, the normal development cooperation has also do to be put at a special level, hence the Binational Commission, which operates completely different from any other consultations in terms of government to government uh, relationship. Thank you, Comrade Vice President. Um, yes, uh, so I just uh, want to ask, um, the VP said that they want Germany to relook this amount. So if that is the case, why are we con uh, going ahead here in Namibia? There's a sense that Namibia was bullied into this agreement, that, there was, that you were told, take it or leave it. Is that correct? Are we getting a correct sense? And um, the, then it says here, both governments share the understanding that these amounts 
mentioned above settle all financial aspects of the issues relating to the past address in this joint declaration. We don't seem to get clarity on this. Germany is saying it is final. Yet we are here saying more money will come. Yes, Mr. Wanguta said uh, no, no more money will come. Yet we keep hearing that from the VP and the um, uh, Deputy Prime Minister. Um, and then we would also like to know if this is deemed such an important achievement by government, why is it signed by ministers and not heads of states? Thank you. Uh, the last part, if this is, like you say, a very important um, achievement, why is it signed by ministers and not heads of states? And then before I go and sit, And then the VP, you keep, uh, it's just a final one. You keep talking about, we, we sat down at the same table with the colonizers. Must the Namibian population um, assume that the fact that we sat by the table with Germany is an, ach an achievement in itself and we should celebrate that? Thank you. Uh, the very last question. You know, regulations means... Uh, Regulations are saying we must be here for two hours. Okay. Two hours does not mean two hours of press briefing, two hours of gathering. We came here actually before half past. Okay. Okay, my last question is the, the benefits of the diaspora, especially those in Botswana and South Africa. What are your findings in this? Are you going to negotiate also for them to benefit? Thank First, um, we should not be the one to determine for governments who should do what and who should not do what. It was agreed between the two governments, envoy to envoy, foreign minister to foreign minister, and head of state to head of state. Let us recognize that and accept that, because it does not add any, any value to, the, here, to this question. I don't want us to get into the trap of the semantics as to this mount and this thing. In the first place, the negotiations concluded on the 15th of May, okay, indicate that we have reached a, either a deadlock or an agreement on 1.1 billion euro. That is, as, that is agreed. Anyone in Germany who is talking about that somehow they have, other, they have spoken to other Germans that can give more money, those are talks. And we should not follow talks. We are talking about here negotiations. And only executive members of a government can talk about money, can talk about figures, and only parliaments can agree on those figures. Let us agree on that. The goodwill that will follow is a different thing altogether. Let us agree on that. Now, the issue of diaspora. We talk about the communities that were most affected, the Namas and the Hereros, and other people too. That was in the paper today, the Sun and the Damaras are mentioned. So, the implementation of that will be a different, a different issue. Now, it does not say the Hereros in Ochodonjupas, the Hereros in Kunene, or the Hereros, or the Namas in Hardap, or the, the no, it talk about all of them. And how we are going now to implement this, to implement this, including everybody, it become our responsibility as Namibians no longer the issue of the, of the Germans. What the Germans are saying, we deal with Namibia because Namibia is where they were. Uh, clo in closing, let me say, I appreciate the effort done by our negotiators. I appreciate all of us who have been following the instructions of our leadership. The president was always wanting to know what is happening and giving the most appropriate directions, including even on the issue of 
to conclude this negotiation or not to conclude these negotiations. The role played by our Ministry for International Relationship, Relations and all the diplomats. But my last and greatest thanks goes to our traditional leaders who have moved this for these years with us. They have given us the courage to continue and we depend on them to finalize this deal. We appeal to all our traditional leaders who are assisting to accept because the money is not sufficient that we agree. But we appeal to them to cross this bridge, to go on the other side so that hopefully in the future we'll be better country, a better community, a more peaceful nation that we can develop our country that all of us can be proud of and our children and grandchildren will be proud of. Once again, thank you very much for your attention.